Buck Kerman's log, day 37. I ordered the pod that the EDB offered to replace the faulty ED stretch with, and I've been waiting on Minmus in the meantime. With nothing better to do, I contacted a part vendor here and repaired the ED stretch. The manufacturer said they reimbursed me the cost of the parts. There's a class action lawsuit about the ED stretch too, so I might get extra funds for that. The pod that they delivered is called the ED Bullet, and it's not what I expected. It looks good from some angles, but it's really ugly in others, at least to my eyes. I can't say it's not functional though, outside of an atmosphere it has much better delta V than the ED stretch does. It can't really go back to Kerbin because it doesn't have parachutes or any heat shielding, but it could do quite a lot of other things. It's got all the scanner equipment, it's just got the poodle on the bottom so it's much easier to land with. It's got the docking port up front, which is easier to dock with instead of the position of the docking port on the ED stretch. And it's got two huge drilling units on the side, so it can drill pretty much anywhere. Uh, Gus Kerman was the Kerbal who brought it over, he was the pilot. And he came over to the ED stretch and uh, we transferred so he came over here and I went over there. He took possession of the ED stretch. Gusbert was a nice guy and that was good because there was a lot of paperwork involved and we spent a lot of time going through it. But after all of that I headed over to the bullet and I was told that I would have a passenger named Erichelle. She's an engineer and she would go over all the systems with me. And she would also need a trip back up to the station around Minmus, which is called the Crow's Nest. Not a very big station, but it's just sort of a refueling facility. Anyway, uh, the, the bullet looks okay from, from a distance. It's just the way the cockpit is built in that I don't quite like. Anyway, it could be worse. And at least it's got a nice long ladder to get up there. So I went into the cockpit and... Arishel was, uh, well, she was excited, that's for sure. Gusbert had been more of an old veteran. Arishel was on her first trip into space. She did know all the systems like the back of her hand, though, and we got started right away. This was still on day 31, by the way, and we spent a few days refueling the ship before heading back up to Minas Orbit. And so she deployed the drills, showed me how to work them, and get them working efficiently, but I don't think I could match her efficiency, though. Along with the big drills, the bullet has a better converter than the ED stretch did. It's got a much better rated converter, even though it's still 1.25 meters. Uh, it's not quite as good as the big 2.5 meter converters that we find on space stations, but it's still pretty, pretty efficient. So I think I'll have an easier time than I did with the ED stretch fueling up. But I'm not sure, maybe having an engineer on board helps. The bullet also has those huge radiators to cool all the systems off and let them work at their peak efficiency, which is nice. We spent six days refueling and that was about a quarter of the tank, so I figured it'd take a month to totally refuel this. Which, uh, which is a drag, but still, it's better than what the ED stretch was doing, so I can't complain. We got finished refueling earlier today and I got all the systems ready to return to Minas Orbit. Erichelle was still totally excited and I guess it was a little bit contagious. It might not come through on the log entry because I'm a bit tired, but uh, I was very, very excited to see what this could do. And so off we went. I basically blasted straight up for a while and got to uh, decent apoapsis and the side is circularized by burning horizontally so that we can get a nice view of the Minas landscape. I hope this log entry comes off as a little bit more positive than the previous one. I always send my log entries home, and my mother complained that the last one was a downer. She's a traditional Kerbal mother, you know. Come back with your parachute or on it and stuff like that. That got me a little bit flustered, and that was one reason why I didn't make any log entries while I was sitting around on Minmus. I really just mean this log to be a way for me to reflect on my journey after after I go back to Kerbin and to see what I did wrong and maybe learn from my lessons and all that. My mother acts like I'm gonna be publishing all this stuff like some sort of memoir of a hero's journey through space or something like that and I, I don't see that happening. I'm not doing anything that a thousand Kerbals haven't done before me after all, but you know how mothers are. Anyway, the rendezvous burn with the crow's nest was just a tiny little burn, less than a meter per second, so I just used RCS to do it. It was a touchy little thing, but it doesn't take much to uh, work out a rendezvous around Minmus. Such a small little moon. 
Focusing on the positive, at least I'm on the inside of the bullet, so I don't have to worry about its looks. And on the inside, it's pretty much like the he stretch. The panel layout is exactly the same and everything, so that's convenient. Getting close to the crow's nest, I only had 26 meters per second to burn off. I used the poodle engine for that. It's a nice efficient engine, but it's got a lot to carry with the two huge drilling units on the side and everything else. So, I don't know about the Delta V claims for this thing. They say it can transfer to Duna and land directly without refueling, but I would really like a pair of drogue chutes just in case. They also say that it can transfer to Jewel just fine, as long as you can uh, get a gravity assist from one of the moons of Jewel in order to get to orbit around Jewel. Well, I hope to test out all these claims in the near future. See? Staying positive, right? Staying positive. Anyway, I was approaching Crow's Nest Station, and it was a pretty clear view of the target docking port. Um, the sun was behind the station, so that was a little bit inconvenient, but it was lit up enough as it was, and I had some forward lights to work with as well. While waiting on Minmus, I had the time to brush up on all my skills, including docking, just reading up on all the details and tips. I was really hoping not to embarrass myself with Arishel on board. I was a little bit nervous because I had my first passenger and everything. Ironically, having the station right in front of me in clear view actually made things more nerve-wracking because if I did anything wrong, I didn't have any excuse. I know that doesn't seem very heroic, but well, sorry mom. And sure enough, I, I had a little bit of difficulty lining up with the docking port at the very end. I was just misreading some numbers, and I came in a little bit low. I think I managed to salvage the situation though, even though I had an uncomfortable bump with the docking port. I was able to readjust pretty quickly, and Arishel didn't say anything about it. She was totally quiet, and I expect that since this was her first trip in space, like any Kerbal, she still had her huge grin plastered on her face, and uh, she probably didn't look very troubled about what I was doing. I didn't have much of a chance to look over at her to check though. But anyway, I docked just fine and the bullet was quite huge compared to Crow's Nest Station though. And there isn't much room for anybody to stay aboard the Crow's Nest. Maybe just a little area near the docking port. So I hope that Arishel will be alright. She doesn't seem very worried at all though. Maybe I'll offer her a free trip to Duna. I don't know if her company will allow it, but... It would sure be good to have an engineer on board and make refueling on Duna a lot quicker. First, I'm gonna have to check whether I can pick up a contract for Duna, but that's where I want to go next. And we'll see how that goes. Maybe I'll have to do some mission on the moon first, though. That's it for me today, and I'll report in once I figure out what I'm going to be doing next.